Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we are using coffee blossom honey, um, not coffee itself. So I found this honey on, on glorybee.com and it's super, super interesting because I have tried coffee meads before to not a great avail to be honest. And I wanted to see what kind of coffee flavors and aromas I could get from coffee honey. So this is not truly gonna be as coffee tasting as a coffee mead, but that's okay. So let me tell you what I'm getting from the coffee honey. It is really, really, first of all, I really like it because it's floral. Um, it's got this uh, dark floral notes to me. The coffee side is not as strong as you would think if you drink a cup of coffee, but um, that's to be expected. You know, bees don't create coffee essentially. It does have hints of, of that um, dark roast. Yeah, it's got like subtle hints of dark roast and mixed with the like, not necessarily super bright floral side, it's really good. So here's what I'm doing today. I am ultimately, ultimately making a half gallon recipe, but I'm gonna show you both. So my recipe today, I'll put the half gallon here that I'm using and then the um, full gallon if you wanted to do that. I am going to be using about 16 ounces or one pound of honey, and then a half a gallon of water, then I want to use the Lauvin uh, QA23. I really like that yeast, it does a great job with most fermentations I've ever used, um, and so, you know, there's that. This is gonna be a coffee traditional. In the secondary, I'm probably gonna have to back sweeten with some um, honey to help bolster the flavor again, so there's that. So that's your half gallon recipe. This is the full gallon. Of course, you can multiply by how big of a recipe you want to make. So let's quit dilly-dallying. Um, let's see what this coffee honey can do. And I'm going to go ahead and mix in my ingredients, my 16 ounces of honey, my water, and, and my yeast. All right, mixed everything together. Of course, everything is sanitized, as you can see there. Starting gravity is 1.0. Five zero. So we are setting roughly at about a 6.6, no, yeah, 6.6, 6.7% mead, I think. And that's great. We've rehydrated our yeast for the last few minutes. So uh, this is the QA23 again. I'm putting these in the QA23 because they are, um, in my experience, QA23 is a smooth fermenter, meaning it doesn't blow off a lot of the honey character. Um, and I just, I, I like the yeast. I've had great success with it. Uh, it gets up to 14%. We're not going to hit that cap, so we're just going to try it. So let me go ahead and pitch this. And now, to help the fermentation along, we are going to add some Fermax, which is autolyzed yeast, yeast holes, some basically yeast food. So I'm going to add this straight in. And I'm putting it all in the primary. Of course, you can use a staggered nutrient schedule. You can do um, use different yeast nutrient, all those things. So let me throw my airlock on. Uh, we're going to let this thing ferment. I, the reason I have this little cart boy here is because this is a half gallon. Obviously, you don't want to age with a lot of um, headspace on it. The fermentation time, that's totally okay because there's a layer, layer of CO2 on the top that protects from any oxidization. That's the word I'm thinking of. And when I age, I'm going to put it into here. It'll fill up this half gallon. So I'm going to put my airlock on. Let's see how this thing ferments or how this thing tastes after the primary. Okay, it's been 10 days, um, I believe, and I know for a fact, actually, this thing is done fermenting. Our original gravity was 1.050. Our current gravity after the 10 days is uh, 1.000. This thing has started to clear some. That's partially how I knew that it was done. So I have, um, I, my goal now, even with this being young, is to get a slight taste test, and then we're gonna rack it into a new container to age for a bit to mellow out some. So let's get a taste test of it. The uh, yeast really did something interesting with this. It's very yeasty uh, smelling. It's very young, clearly. Got this like dark, um, what is that aroma? It's very, very roasty smelling, if that makes sense. It's like a, a dark roast like coffee bean with a little sweetness on the nose. It's like a combination of the two. It's kind of funky. Interesting. Let's try it. Ooh, very light bodied, kind of juice-esque. It's got some perceived sweetness even though it's dry. There's like a fruity character, um, a little bit of that dark roastiness popping through, but it's like a, 
Like on the nose, it's a dark roast. Uh, on the actual palate, it's pretty light roast coffee bean-esque. I definitely get a little bit of that coffee character. So that's popping through, but it's not super prevalent. Not like in my face, what I'd want and expect from a coffee mead. Yeah, this thing, it's its definitely young. Very, it's got some yeasty taste to it. Um, not very well rounded right now. It's just kind of pointed. It's a, it just needs time. So I'm gonna rack it into this container and then I'll tell you what I'll do. Okay, here's what I have. This is my half gallon. The good news about, or the good thing about going over the half gallon in your recipe is that you end up with exactly a half gallon. I actually ended up with more. This is like a little sampler, uh, probably a, you know, a, whatever, eighth of a gallon. And uh, my plan for this thing is gonna be to pile more various meads on top to make like an extreme weird house blend of like 14 different meads. So that'll be interesting. Now, what I wanna do, because I want to show you what I'm doing, I'm gonna take a little bit of this coffee blossom honey, just a little spoonful, and we're gonna back sweeten our current sample with this to see if we can pronounce the coffee blossom taste. So let me mix this in. Okay, I've mixed in just a little tiny amount of honey just to back sweeten. Let's see what it's like. Ooh, yeah. So definitely very, um, very floral, a little bit dark, or sorry, not dark, light roast. Uh, I get the um, semi-smokiness of a coffee bean that I sometimes taste. There's a, I mean, it's sweeter now, so we back sweetened. Yeah, this coffee bean, coffee blossom honey. It has that coffee taste, but of, when I think of, think of a coffee mead, I think of like a punch in the face, here's a coffee bean you're chewing on. And this thing's like a nice balance of that. It's very, very light. Like, I think if someone tasted this, I'd have to say this is a coffee blossom honey, so it should have some coffee notes. They probably will not be able to pick out and say that this tastes like coffee, which is okay because bees are not gonna go to the, you know, and gather coffee beans exact flavor extract you know that just does, doesn't make sense yeah so i think it's great i like it a lot um it definitely is not as coffee as a coffee tasting as you would think but that's okay i'm gonna let this thing age we're gonna see if some of these flavors meld a little better over time and then maybe here in a few weeks we will um end up stabilizing this because we want to preserve sweetness and add more coffee blossom honey. So let me fast forward in time. All right, and we're back. To give you some um, timeline of this, this was started three months ago. It was stabilized about two months ago. So it's been a long time. Let's taste it after um, a little bit of age. Still has a decent honey, um, roastiness, like that coffee we had talked about originally. It definitely has lost, or has melded a lot of the alcohol into the mead. The um, floral presence of the honey is more existent. It needs some a bolstering of that coffee blossom though. It needs more roastiness. Yeah, the, the heat from it is gone. And I know it was low ABV, but let's see what this tastes like with some back sweetening. So the way I'm gonna do this, is I am actually going to rack out of this container because there's a little sediment into this right here. And then we are gonna back sweeten in this and then more than likely go back into this. So let's go ahead and go through this whole process. Okay, so I added a grand total of 5.3 ounces of coffee blossom honey back to it, the original honey we used. Here's what it tastes like. Definitely very, uh, compared to what it was, very sweet. And um, it, it has that enhanced uh, coffee aroma. It's very, it's faint, but it's, it's more so there. Now, the other thing that this has is this uh, almost like mesquite-esque blossom honey character to the meat, which has some darkness, some dark notes, and also some slight, uh, what I like to think of as whiskey notes, but some people don't. Yeah, this thing, is really good. Now it's definitely sweet. The new gravity, final gravity I should say, is 1.022. Now this started at 1.050, went to 1.000, stabilized, now it's 1.022. Theoretically, if the stabilizing worked, this should not see any re-fermentation. So 
<laughs> before we do that, actually, before we um, just bottle it, we're gonna make sure it's not gonna referment. I'm gonna put this stuff back in. I'm not gonna transfer it into this carboy. Um, we're just gonna let it set in this for a couple days and then bottle it. So let's make sure there's no refermentation. Come back and take care of it. All right, I've gone ahead and bottled it. I got two beer bottles, a half another beer bottle that I'll drink pretty quick because it's, again, only half, and I don't want oxygen on top, and a wine bottle. Um, this is the half gallon recipe, of course. I'll put a multiplier of some sort up here, so if you wanna make a bigger batch of this, the recipe is right here. Now, this thing was safe to bottle because I checked the gravity reading, and it was the same. It's been over a week since I added the uh, coffee blossom and all those things. So um, we are totally good on that. Let's taste it again. Oh man. Yeah, that it's so floral and um, it does have that roastiness. I've already done a bunch of tastings in this. This thing's fantastic. That's really good. I would highly recommend you go and make this if you'd like to, the recipe is there. And I hope you will join me for some future videos. Was this coffee blossom mead, uh, does it taste exactly like coffee? No, but it has hints of coffee, which is very interesting. Coffee blossom honey can be used to pronounce that roastiness, and I highly encourage you to pick some up if you'd like to. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time in another video. It might be a traditional, it might be a mead test. Regardless, I hope to see you then. Have a great day, cheers.